See, I heard we have a really good backup feature match. Yeah, our backup some, feature some match is players. actually uh, Osip Lomadovic versus Reed Duke. The Aristocrats versus Jun. We've already seen that once today, so we wanted to get a little something new out here. So we have Chris Hairwiggler. And he right. is playing Prime Speaker Band. We didn't see Prime Speaker Band yet. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saw a band deck from Costa. We saw a band deck from Michael J. Flores. Yep. But no Prime Speaker Band. Yeah, three different versions of Bant. Costa playing Bant Flash. Flores playing Bant Hexproof, and now we see Prime Speaker Bant in the limelight here. Again, the deck that basically uh, Paul Rietzel and Matt Sperling have really put on the map here. And it is very traditional in its take and most of the most of the same cards. The only difference here is you're going to find three copies of Advent of, War, Advent of the Worm excuse me, in the main deck. Okay, awesome. On the other side, we see Ely, Ely Cyril, and he is playing a blue-white-red deck, again with Aetherling as the main card from Dragon Maze. So we want to see how, how good is this, this, this card, you know? Aetherling started off, it's, it's a card nobody really talked too much about, but in the, in the past couple of days, it started building up a lot of hype. So we'll see what happens with Aetherling. So I want to see an Aetherling get resolved. Yeah, I want to see it in yeah. play and see it in action. Yeah, to That's see how good one. it really is. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's good. It, it seems powerful, especially with Cavern. Yeah. You know, I mean, it seems good against the aggro decks too, just because you know, once you, you know, Supreme Burden and Stabilize, it just closes out the game in like two hits. All right, so there's a far seat from Chris, and this is a pass the turn. And both players here are five and one. We'll see what Ely really can really do. You know, the thing about the blue white red decks nowadays, no one is playing Geist St. Trust. I'm kind of wondering why. It's really taking a step on the back burner. Outside of Bant Hexproof, it's not seeing like any play right now. People have moved towards, you know, Boris Reckoner in that three mana spell slot. But yeah, Geist St. Trust, for how much it has dominated, is seeing like next to no play now. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because it, it's still such a powerful card. All right, so there's land number five for Chris. So he's going to lead off with a Loxon on Smiter. And he'll pass the turn. Let's see what Ely does. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Did he dissipate that? He dissipated oh, the Loxon on no. Smiter. No, you can't, Ely. Wow, that was insane. Because what happened was that he just played Loxon and Smiter and immediately passed the turn. So go. You know, signifying you couldn't counter it or it's definitely going to resolve. But Ely said, hold on a minute. You know, I'm going to dissipate it. And, yeah. And, yeah. And now he has the Supreme Verge in a way. And I mean, obviously, that's a that's a pretty big misstep, which we all know. But one that you, you hope you don't make on camera. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it happens. And you know, Ely can't just concede the game because of it. Yeah. You know? So. I do see an Advent of the Worm in Chris's hand, I believe. Also a, uh, a shock land. So I think you should play Temple Garden and probably just pay the two life and then pass the turn. He has, I think it's Restoration Angel, Azorius Charm, and Advent of the Worm. Yeah. I, mean, I kind of want to, I kind of just want to resolve Advent of the Worm right now if not having it into a counter spell. I mean, but it could just be another Supreme Verdict. Yeah, but, I mean, it could be. I mean, normally, normally these decks play less Supreme Verdicts than than like counter spells and stuff like that. Like, you know, they might have, you know, a total of four counter spells in their main deck. And, and then like two or three. Yeah, two yeah. or three. Yeah, and especially I mean, if Ely goes like fifth land, untap, go, Snapcaster Dissipate takes care of that. So Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, he is playing only two Supreme Verdicts. So, yeah, your line of play is probably better. And there's the 5-5 five, five Worm. Also with Trample, so it's really important. Yeah, Trample is not insignificant on that card. Yeah. It's actually quite relevant that it has that ability on it. Normally, you see most, normally when you see tokens, you just think like, you know, maybe they fly, maybe they don't. That's about it. Yeah. But to have a token that has Trample on it and have Trample be extremely relevant because it's so big, it's something to certainly like keep in mind when you're playing against this card. Yeah, they could definitely, you know, attack through Augur Bolas, attack through Snapcaster Mage to actually hit the Planeswalkers yeah. that your opponents, you know, will have in play. So here does come Advent of the Worm. We'll see if Ely has something like an Azorius Charm. It's just taken care of. He does not. This is going to go down to 13. Chris draws Snapcaster Mage for the turn to go along with his Restoration Angel and just passes the turn back. That's really good. Being able to Snapcaster back and add a gun to the worm. Yeah. And then, you know, Restoration Angel and out your Snapcaster to possibly flash back something else. Yep. A combination I have a feeling right we're going to see for many, many moons to come. Yeah, probably until Advent of the Worm leaves standing. <laughs> it just got here, so. So now you're going to see Snapcaster Mage here again. There is... Advent of the Worm being flashed back. Is it going to resolve? It looks like it is. Yeah. Looks like he's going to take the opportunity to resolve a Sphinx's Revelation here. Yeah, so Revelation for three. 
what he's going to do, push himself up to 16. But he's going to take a huge hit in the face in the process. Yeah, he's taking 12, 12 damage. That's nothing to, to mess around with, you know? Because if the life totals are correct, he's going to run up to 4 yeah. from this attack. Chris draws a Temple Garden. Going to come across here for ten, for 12, excuse me. Go down to 4. And if you think about it, you know what combos well with Adamant of the Worm? Zagana. Prime Speaker Zagana yeah. itself. Yeah. It's just uh, draw 6 cards. It slices. Yeah. It dices. Yeah. What can't Advent of the Worm do? Alright, so let's see if Ely has a Supreme Verdict here. He has or, a 4 or life. Caster. Yeah, or Snapcaster. Snapcaster. Yeah, I think he does have a Snapcaster in his hand, to be honest. That's what it looks like. Okay, right. Snapcaster Mage. We'll uh, target a Supreme Verdict and play it. Yep, so that'll clear all that up. So now Chris is going to go end of turn Restoration Angel. I can't really see him not doing it. So there's that. I'm scanning his deck list really quickly. Like, he has, he has Gavney Township, two of those, and Celeste and Charmy has two of those, so he okay. does have cards to end the game right now. But instead he drew a Thrag Touch, just as good. That's actually just quite as good. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't end the game, but it, it kind of ends the game. Yeah. If, if Ely was relying on Supreme Bird to get out of this situation, that window is basically closed now. Yes. I, I think I see a Pillar of Flame in Ely's hand, a Restoration Angel, and can't really make out too much else. So we'll see what Ely could do to uh, to get out of this. Yeah, there's a Searing Spear, there's a, there's a Pillar, I think there's, there's a, a Zorius Charm, charm yeah, So, so yeah. He, he has some tools. So there's so a here's Boros, Boros Reckoner. Reckoner. All right, well that does a nice job of fighting against the Ragtusk. And let's see what Chris draws here. Chris probably looking for like, something like a Selesnya Charm or a Sphinx's Revelation or a Prime Speaker Zagana. Yeah, I mean, a lot of cards to get him out of this situation. I mean, he's already pretty far ahead as you're going to see Restoration Angel come across here. He's only going to play his own Restoration Angel just to block here for a little bit of parity. Okay, that's fine. And Chris will probably just play a land and pass the turn. No real need to, to, to bluff and hold lands, especially when you have something like Sphinx of Revelation in your deck or any card draw spell. Yeah, when you have Revelation in your deck, you just want to play your lands. I think I would have played out that land. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's, truthfully, there's really nothing worth bluffing at this point. That's, yeah, exactly. As you said, and you can bluff the same with, like, one card as opposed to two. Yeah. And, you know, by by playing a land this turn and then playing your, if you draw Revelation, you play your last turn in Revelation for, for a huge amount. Yes. I think it was a Gavity Township. That was a Gavity Township. Okay, so that's definitely going to be really good here. I don't even know if Chris wants to attack. It might seem obvious to attack the Restoration Angel. I feel he doesn't have to. What do you think? I agree that he doesn't have to attack. I think he can just stay where he's at, but at the same time, this kind of forces Eli to have, or Ellie, excuse me, to have something. Okay. Does he have an Azorius Charm? He does have an Azorius Charm. He wouldn't let that go. Maybe he wants to cycle the Azorius Charm there. I think he wants to, like, Searing Spear the Angel. Yeah, that'll take care of it for good. I, I think I actually like that trick quite a bit. Really? I don't. I would much rather have my own Restoration Angel and allow Chris to just draw... Just draw Restoration yeah, Angel again? Yeah. Kind of, I mean, making it a makeshift time walk? Yes. Yeah, so... So he draws a... Helix? I think he drew a War Leader's yeah, Helix. Two of them in his deck. Drew one right now. So kind of kind of some interesting plays here. War Leader's Helix is where it's at, man. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely really good. That card is good. Every time I've seen someone draw that, it's been nice. War Leader Helix is going to take care of Thraxus right now. Okay. Now this one I don't love. Because I think you could have sniped another Gavity Township activation. Yeah, do it in response? Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely fine. I guess he wants to get in with the, the Reckoner. Is he going to get in with the Reckoner? I mean, he's going to push his level up to five, so it makes the Reckoner attract a little bit more. The Reckoner attack, excuse me, a little bit more attractive. Okay. But I, I don't. I can't imagine that he would, and he's not going to. Okay. So Chris is going to draw a card. He oh, draws a Sphinx Revelation. Revelation. See, and he should have just had more lands in play. Yep. So it's just it just shows you how you really have to think out all your turns to think, hey, what's left in my deck to draw. So here it's kind of interesting. I think Chris still wants to attack. Really? Yeah, why not, right? Ely really has to have something, otherwise they just trade. And the board is clear and you have a Sphinx's Revelation in hand. 
I mean, I'm more inclined to just want to resolve my sixth revelation for a very large amount here okay. than, than attacking and like activating township and trading. Yeah. That just myself personally. It, it also could give you more time. Maybe you could draw something else to bait out a counter spell. Yeah. So. Pass the turn back. All right, now, so there's now, revelation. I really don't like this play of just waiting for, for his turn. If you're gonna wait for his turn, you wait for his upkeep. Yeah, I want to do his upkeep. I don't want to give him a draw step. Yeah, why? Why give him a draw step? Yeah, I want to. Really I mean, if he sense. has it, he has it. I don't want to give him the chance to actually draw and to it, though. It's not like Chris has another spell in his hand where this is kind of like bait. Yeah. Chris just has a land in his hand. Yeah. And also, Chris would not have had to have discarded. Sometimes people, you know, they're like, oh, well, I have five cards in my hand. I'm gonna six for five. I don't want to really discard three. Yeah. But here, he just has one card in his hand. He's only gonna six for six, putting him at exactly seven cards in hand. Yeah. So we'll see what Ely does. I guess he's gonna activate that lighthouse. Try to try to hit something. Maybe hit it like an is a charm. Which kind of matches the other He has is a charm, he has two dissipates, he has a couple more snapcaster mages. That's about it. Okay. I mean it's, it's better than nothing. I mean it's worth a shot. You don't ever want a big Sphinx of Revelation to resolve. Yeah. Because if this Sphinx of Revelation resolves, I'm almost certain Chris is gonna win this game. Yeah. It's this is a game right here, that's why it was so important for him. Why would you give Ely an extra draw step? Yep. So you see Ely moving around his lands quite a bit here. Does, does he have his own Sphinx of Revelation? That's what it looks like to me. And he's going to do it for four? Yep. So his only out here is Is It Charm? Yeah. Is one, I don't, I don't, he definitely has at least one more Dissipate in his deck. So he casts for five with one floating. Chris cast for five. Yeah, it was one floating. I guess he just announced it wrong. Yeah, I mean he must have. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did see him try to draw like uh, uh, try to untap his temple guard. And yeah. I was kind of wondering. So both revelations are going to resolve for both players. So yeah. after that kind of confusing turn, we see both players draw a bunch of cards, gain a bunch of life. Chris is going to draw a card, plays a sun petal grove that he draws, and now let's see what he comes up with here. You see a smiter. Yeah, his hand's really good. Drag, a drag tusk. Drag tusk. Restoration, restoration angel. Really yeah. So, again, I, I don't see why that piece is not getting in. I mean, hopefully it gets in this turn. But it, it's just a good attack, right? Yeah, I mean, this turn I like the attack a lot more than last turn. Okay. Like, last turn I was more concerned about resolving Sphinx of Revelation and going from there. This turn I think it's perfectly fine. Like, you attack, it trades, you know, it trades with the Reckoner because of the Cavity Township activation. Yeah. You know, this th that turn I like it a lot more. Okay. You're going to see a Thragtus come down here. Sure. So now, do you, do you like the attack now? Not if you play the threat plus pre, pre attack. No. No. Well, like, um, I mean, I still like the attack. Just, just attack. It's like, I think Chris is so scared of this Boris Reckoner. That's how it seems so far. Yeah, sure. You just want to get that thing out of the way. Just yeah. you need to get past that point in the game. Yeah, exactly. Like the Reckoner is not that good. It's only going to be a one for a half. Yeah. Essentially, right? Because that that beast token was a free roll for you. Yeah. You know, I don't like it. I don't like it that he plays it. The, the reason I don't like the attack now after he played Thrag Test is because like if if he attacks with the with the beast token, Ely blocks, you know, pump up the pump up the guys with the township, then the Boris Reckoner's damage goes to, at the Thrag Tusk. Yeah, but the Thrag Tusk would be a four. Yeah, but the beast is dealing four damage to the Reckoner. Oh, okay, I see. What so you're yeah, so yeah, then yeah. it kills. So then it kills the Thrag Tusk, and then like Verdict kind of wipes your board out again. Sure. Like I like it if he does it. Pre Thrag Tusk, yeah, yeah, like the, exactly, the beast yeah. trades for the Reckoner, and then you play Thrag Tusk, which gives you wrap, which gives you Supreme Verdict protection. But yeah. now I don't like it as much. Okay, that, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking you just would do it before the Thrag Tusk. Yeah. Was Thrag Tusk come down? That's fair. I mean, but it's still not that bad, right? Because all it's really making is that Thrag Tusk into a token, and then Reckoner is gone. Yeah. So you're trading again a half a card for the, the Boris Reckoner. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you overall that, you know, at some point, you know, I feel like Chris is kind of overvaluing just how good Boris Reckoner is, as you're going to see a second one here from Ely. Okay. And he needs to get past this point in the game of clearing those things up and moving on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I guess Chris is, in Chris's mind, he's just going to end a turn, Restoration Angel, blink off Thrag Dust, untap, attack with everybody. Yeah. He's going to play an Abbott Abbott Worm. Worm. I'm pretty sure he had a Restoration Angel in his hand. He does have a Restoration Angel in his hand, and I'm, again, like you, I'm a little surprised that he's not casting it this turn. Yeah. Especially when you have a Thrag Tusk in play. 
Street. Some Pedal Grove is the draw. I do, however, like how Chris draws his card. It's kind of like a <laughs> whoosh, you know? It lets us see it. Yeah, it lets, it us it see lets it. everyone Thank see you, it at Chris. home, too. So. so here, I feel, I feel like he's not putting any work in this cabinet counter. Like, he had it in play for, for several turns now, and it's yet to... I mean, I feel like we should be at, like... I feel like we should be at two spell territory now, right? And by that I mean we should be at spell plus township activation sure, yeah. every turn for the rest of the game. Yeah, because township, you're, you're definitely right, is just a spell, like it's an uncountable, awesome spell right here. All right, so everything's coming in now. Which, you know, I don't necessarily love because I would just probably double block the, the worm. Because he has the, the helix to gain life as well. Sure. So, so he won't die. He, he could Helix. He's got a Restoration Angel. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess it kind of disguised the fact that he had a Restoration Angel by him playing Abbott in the world. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, regardless, he could still double block the, the, the worm right here, which that's what I would do. Sure. Right? Double block, get both of your guys first strike, take care of it. Yeah, take four, go to five. I mean, it's like better than nothing. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what it does. Both of them get first strike. I still think you pump up the jam here with the uh, with the township. Yeah. Get your get your four points of damage across. Make your guys a little bit bigger. Yeah, your worm token's gonna die, but it's gonna become a six six. And then two first striking boar strikers will take it down. But make your army a little bit bigger. Uh, bolster the size of those guys. Put restoration angel into five toughness territory. Okay. To dodge a war leader's helix. I think you. I think you should almost certainly see a Gabby township activation here. Yeah, I think so as well. And that's exactly what he's going to yeah. do. So, counters to everybody here. Yeah, a lot of counters going on. Let's see if, we'll see if we have, yeah, we have one more white die there. So, perfect for you guys watching there at home. Make sure there's no, uh, make sure it's perfectly clear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Ely's going to fall down to five life, I yes. believe. That Helix would have brought him back up to nine, but it didn't resolve because the Thrag Tusk wasn't there. Yes. Restoration Angel came to play, moved out the Thrag Tusk, Helix pretty much fizzled for yep. all the old school players. Is fizzle still a term players use? No, you get banned if you use the term fizzle. So. Do you? Yeah, you're just <laughs> thrown out, actually. All right. What's the terminology? Is there a terminology for it? Um, there is, and it's actually escaping me right now. Because it just does not resolve. Um, right, there's a my tusk goodness. Power. I used to be so good at this too. Sure. All right, so checking out the Tusk Hour. So there's one, two. Draw a card. You know, and this was the game where Ely decided just to pretty much discard his Dissipate. Mm -hmm. So he could have had that Dissipate for that Sphinx's Revelation for, yep. for five, which should have been for six. Yep. But the, the whole game would have been different. And, and I think Ely probably would have won. Yeah, I mean, it feels that way. Yeah. So you do see two copies of Thought Scour here. Turn over four cards, draw Ely two new cards. But it looks like he's searching for help here. He's also searching through the graveyard. Yeah. Sometimes that's usually like a desperation, like, hey, did I, do I have anything? Do I have a flashback card in my graveyard or anything? Uh, we're being told that the, uh, the the name of the term I'm being told is Brick. Brick? Yeah, if you if you miss the word, is yeah, your I'm, card bricked? I'm pretty sure it's not brick. Is that not the technical term? No, it's not I, brick. I don't think so. Uh, I've been told here as well that it might be countered upon resolution due to not having a target. You know what? That, that sounds a little yeah. bit more correct, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure it's brick. I, I, I think Wayne Gretzky probably said one of those. I'm not yeah, sure which one. Yeah. But. All right, so there's a third Boros Reckoner. That's a lot of Minotaur Wizards. And, I mean, if I'm Chris, I'm just... Attacking with a Restoration Angel here, and only the Restoration Angel. Activate the activate the Township for lethal. Yeah, why not? Make him have make a make Ellie have whatever it can be. Yeah. You know you don't want to. There, there's not much of a reason to attack with I mean, all your other guys. Don't poke the bear. Yeah. So Chris is uh you know in the tank thinking. Both players are five and one here, so they're at a stage where they played for for a long day so far, and they know they're they're very close to top eight. Yeah, every decision matters. You know, pretty much three more wins will be in top eight. They don't want to blow it here, so Chris is going to attack with everybody, and he really does have an Azura Sharp. I mean, do you like this attack with everybody or no? I honestly don't. I mean, the thought here is that you know you want to clear everything up, you want to get everything out of the way, and then. 
You know, if he has an Azorius Charm, then he has an Azorius Charm, which he has to have right now. Is he going to Azorius Charm a Lifelink? Ooh. Right? Now that could be fun. The Boros Charm, like, won't he gain 18 life here, or am I mistaken? I have to see, I'd have to read Boros Reckoner. Yeah. Let's just pull up Boros Reckoner. Yeah. I mean, why not? We, we all know what Boros Reckoner does, but we'll, uh, we'll pull it up anyway. So I, I think that's actually what, what, what he's doing. He just gave all his guys life. Away. Which, if that's the way it works, which I think it works. I think you're right. Yeah. All right, there it is. Whenever Boros Reckoner is not damaged, damage, it does that much damage, damage to Yeah, to sure. So it's still, it's still going to have life link. Yeah, because it I doesn't think, have yeah. to... It doesn't have to be in play, play for damage, exactly. right? Because it, it will trigger when it's in play. It's it's dealt the damage. Okay. So so that's when it triggers. As it's like going away on Moto, you see like it pop up. <laughs> I, I only know I only know anything because of magic because of Magic Online. So I, I believe Illy's gonna go to. Let's see. So he's taking. So he should be gaining. So he's gonna gain nine from just the records. Yeah, and then he should gain another. Another nine. No, another a lot more. Whatever. Oh, however much, yeah, however much the guys are dealing. Sure. Yeah. So it's going to be like I think a total of eighteen because of the restoration angel minusing, right? Because the restoration the, the angel is going to deal some damage. So the total is going to be like eighteen or nineteen. So if, if, we, if we're counting the damage that the creatures are dealing to the reckoner, because that's how much reckoner is going to deal back. Yeah. So that's seven and five is twelve. Twelve and five is twelve and five is seventeen. Okay. Plus. Plus nine. Uh, it's twenty six. Minus, minus five. Six. Oh, minus five. Minus yeah, five. Right. Twenty one. Yeah, it should be twenty one. Life link. Okay. Unless we're just horribly wrong about this interaction. No, I, I, I believe we're right. And somebody on Twitter just just tell us thumbs up or thumbs down. Just yeah. one person at SCG Live. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. SCGNJ. <laughs> That's it. Or you can you know, tweet it to to me or, or Gerard or I's uh, Twitters. Okay. If we're right, if we're right or wrong about this, because I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. That, that, that was like one of the reasons why I was thinking you only attack the restoration agent. Sure. Just to avoid any of this nonsense. Yeah, avoid the chain reaction. And, and, it, and if he has a Sorius Shard, that's fine. I'm going to draw my restoration angel next turn, blink up my Thrak Tusk again. Yeah. All right, so I mean, the, the life went up. I feel like we're probably right. Yeah. And when the dust yeah. is settled, there is that beast from the Thrak Tusk. Uh, what, where did all the damage get dealt from the Reckoners? That's my question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah, there we yeah. go. The, Are those the things... Angel's definitely dead. Okay, the Angel's dead for sure. All right. So we dealt three, so that's going to be a five. How, how is one of the other beasts not dead? Did, did depends on, it, it depends on where the redirection is gone. Yeah. Two to the Angel. Yep. Yeah, what did the, the, the original okay, track 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 was yeah. a, It was a 7 5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Thank you. So. Hey, we're getting some, some info from Twitter. We're right. We're right. All right. High five. For the first time in like. Yeah! I don't even know how long. That means we get to keep our job. Yeah. That means we don't have to bring Glenn in here. All right. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> I think Glenn's eating a hot dog. I'm not sure. He is eating. That's a, that's a piece of pizza. Oh, a piece of that's pizza. a pepperoni on there. Okay. Yeah. No, he's working. He's working. <laughs> Pete, he's working, we swear. <laughs> Alright, so there's a hollow fountain from, from Eli. And I mean at least he's had a lot of life. That's like I mean if we're looking for positives here, that yeah. is certainly one. I mean, if, if there is one thing that can chase down a high life total, it is creatures with Gavity Township, so. Alright, so he's gonna loot with the White House. And just looking for a Supreme Verdict or like Snapcaster Mage Supreme yeah, Verdict. Yeah, right I think he drew a Sacred Foundry. I do see a Restoration Angel in his hand, which is normally good against 3 3 beasts, but not when there's a Gavity Township. Not these 3 3 beasts. Yeah. Chris draws a far safe. I feel like Chris is having a really good time. You could tell. He's like untapping, he's attacking. He, he knows he's going to win. He's really, he's like, yeah, tap my man. <laughs> like, like you saw how he tapped it. Like, Ugh. It's hard not to have a good time. It's magic, man. Yeah, you know? Sometimes when, when you're losing, you might have the best of times, but maybe, maybe you do, Cedric. Yeah, yeah. I, I do it a lot. Okay. So you just have to you have to become one with the law. Yeah. By the way, we're going to see an attack here for 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. And now here's a far seek here. Yeah, so ch chasing down that, you know, that, that interaction there with the Azori Charm and the Reckoners, Definitely. as good as it was, it's like, okay, that just buys you two turns. No big deal. Okay. 
So this is round seven of ten. Yeah, just just three rounds left. Yeah. These guys are definitely closing in. Yeah, these players battling it out in game one here. Azorius trying Zorius to draw stuff there. Yeah, he's gonna have to cycle this immediately. Maybe maybe you, you lighthouse first before the cycle. Yeah, I like I like lighthousing first. Get some more information for yourself. See what you can run into here as he does draw a Boros Reckoner off of the lighthouse. Gonna discard a planes. Is, is that a Tempest Planes in the graveyard? That is a Tempest Planes. Good eye, Sniper. Alright, so there's a so Boros Reckoner. Yeah. That can buy him a little bit of time. You can trade with a guy. Yeah. Also, they have to be careful on time. This is still game one. Yep. And we're now 25 minutes. This is certainly not the slowest matchup. This is a grinded out affair here. Yeah. Neither one of these players wants to draw. As Chris draws his card for the turn, it's another breeding pool. Yeah, and it's especially bad for the player who lost game one. Yes. Because now they're pretty much only playing for a draw. Yep. So he rearranges Lance here. Moves the Avenue Township over to the side. Shrugs his shoulders and said, all right, Beast Tokens, let's do this again. I think Restoration Angel is coming down right now. This does feel like a Restoration Angel to me, and it is. Yeah, it's not really going to do too much. That one's on chump blocking duty. It looks like he's probably yeah. going to put that in front of the biggest one. Boris Reckon in front of the other big one. There's your Township activation. So he could take out one Beast? Yeah. That's... That's okay, I guess. He still has the Azorius Charm and the Lighthouse to dig. But what is he really digging to? I guess he's digging to a Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's either Revelation or desperately digging for a Verdict. Or a Snapcaster. The caster. other Verdict or the Snapcaster Mage, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised. A lot of these blue-white red decks are only playing two Verdicts. Yeah, I feel like that's surprised the, by yeah. that as well. But I mean, when you have, like, Reckoner in your deck, Reckoner kind of holds the fort down since you don't have to, you don't want to Verdict it away. Yeah, I don't even like Reckoner too much in these decks. I would rather just play Augur, Snapcaster, you like Restoration Angel? Well, then uh, Esper is a deck for you, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chris uses the Township once again. So Ely should go down to five right now. Yeah, yep. there it is. Reckoner, fire back here, bang. Yeah. I mean, just one of the big ones you yep. want to dig out. Doesn't matter which one. So there's a Tap Beast, and we know Chris is just holding lands and a locks on Smiter. He's trying to basically yeah. save that Sider. Smiter for like after a Supreme exactly, Verdict yeah. comes here. Yeah. And I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, there's a Turn and Burn. This is not that bad. So now he gets to Azorius Charm and Turn and Burn. And he still has a Lighthouse to loot. Now the question here he is... He has enough is, mana for, for everything. Now the question here is, is yeah. how, how well does Turn and Burn work with counters on a creature? Turn and Burn with counters? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Yeah, because I, I, think that that, I think the counters on the creature negate the effect of turning into an 0-1. It turns into an 0-1, of course, and then there's the counters on the creature. Yeah. So I don't think that Turner Burke's going to get the job done here on a guy. Yeah, I believe you're correct, but regardless, Ely would not die this turn. That's true. So, and this could take him deeper and deeper to something. So, there's he starts tapping his mana, and there's a turn and burn. Which one is he? The smaller one he targeted, correct? Yeah. Okay. And it looks like those players know how that interaction works. Yeah. Maybe on the big one? No, he doesn't want... He wants to do it on the small one. He wants to do it on the small yeah. one. It looks like he's targeting the big one. So then he could... Uh, yeah, let's get a rule on how that actually works. Yeah. Yeah, I would want to check on, I would want to check on that, too. Yeah, because it loses all the abilities, but I believe the counters do stay up. Yeah. And it looks like with that creature not gone, it looks like the judge, yeah, the judge points yeah, to points the die, and he says, yeah, I mean, the, the counters still stay there. Yeah. So, did, did, did Eli... All right, so... All right, yeah, I mean, the interaction with Turn and Burn kind of ruins his entire plan. Yeah, well, turn, uh, turn and Burn with counters yeah, on a yeah, guy. Yeah. It ruins what he's trying to do. Yeah, but Eli just would have not have lost that game. He, he could have just turned and burned the small one. Yes. He, if he yeah. turn yeah, if he turned and burns the small one, he ends up taking two, three from the Gamble Touch activation. He goes, goes down to two. Azorius Azor Azor the big, the big one. one. And, yeah. and now he has a chance to win this game. Yeah, he has an opportunity to, you know, lighthouse into something. Who knows what? But the, yeah, the game should not end that should not end that turn, but you have to know the interaction between yeah, turn and burn encounters, which yeah. you saw us guessing kind of, kind of making sure because it's something we haven't seen for yeah. a while. And, and normally, if you're if you're not too sure, you know, the best thing to do is to call a judge. You call yep. a judge, ask him away from the table, uh -huh. or not to really give away your hand. You don't want to say, "Hey, I have turn and burn. How does it work?" Yep. Just pull, you know, 
But uh, yeah. so Eli, a couple of mistakes there probably cost them that game would have dissipated and turn and burn. But hey, they're playing best two out of three. Yep. So you know you can't really count Eli out yet. Let's look at the sideboard. He's got another turn and burn. I think he's gonna just board out the turn and burn just because he's like kind of angry at it. He's like ah. <laughs> Uh, two Detention Spheres, three Clones, two Dispel, one Supreme Verdict, one Negate, two Witchbane Orbs. That's a lot of Witchbane Orbs to the most That's a lot of Witchbane Orbs. And finally, three Purify the Green. So I'm not really too sure what he wants to bring in. He definitely wants the three Clones. Yeah, I mean, I if, if I'm Eli, I, I definitely want the additional Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Potentially an, uh, the Negate in his sideboard as well, just because I know that my opponent has Revelations, and I'd prefer if those didn't resolve given, given the choice. Probably at least one of the, the uh, Dispels, maybe two. Maybe he wants all the counters, two dispels, one negate, and then one verdict, and three clones. So, because Sphinx is one of Chris's best cards. Yeah. So if you have negate and dispel, you're, you're in much better shape. Yeah. What about Chris? He has anything said? Take a look at his sideboard. Two dissipates, two negates, two supreme verdicts, two rest in peace, three centaur healer, a Selesnia charm, a Tormod script, and two angel serenities. If I'm Chris and this game is going to certainly go long, I want two copies of angel serenity. Uh, yeah. You know, the game is certainly going to go long enough as we just saw that game. That game took around 30 to 35 minutes here, Gerard. Um, you're gonna, you're, you're, the game is going to go long. There's almost no way for it not to go long. And if it does go short, it's because you, as Chris, killed your opponent super quickly. Yeah. So if, if, if Ellie's deck does what it's supposed to, then Angel's Shrine is going to be very good. Um, the counter spells you can certainly bring in here, I think. Uh, you don't want Supreme Verdicts from your deck. They're going to be coming from his deck, so it's kind of intuitive to have your own. So I like the uh, the ability to have dissipate and negate, and you know I don't. What about rest in peace? Maybe rest in peace is like an, it, it, it seems okay but not great to me. Okay. Well, you know he has snapcaster mage. You know he has Boris reckoner. It turns out he does have Power fire. Chris doesn't know if he has level fire or not, mm -hmm. but you know sometimes when you do see the Boris reckoners, it might ring a bell. Like hey, you know maybe he does have Power fire as well. So rest in peace, about 50-50 right there. Yeah, I, I, I can certainly see an application for it. I don't love it. But at the same time, if you're kind of worried about those interactions of Snapcaster Mage, having to worry about a Harvest Fire, which it completely shuts that card off, period, uh, then yeah, I can see bringing it in. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's pretty obvious here. Chris is a, a huge favorite in this match. Just, he's up a game, and, and the time factor is, is so big. It's going to be really tough for the blue at red player to actually beat Chris not only in one game with only about 15 minutes, but in two games. Yep. You know, 18 minutes on the clock, they're going to shuffle for a bit more, draw their hands, if there's any mulligans. So, and uh, Chris is going to pile his deck, and I think Ely knows he's uh, he's definitely in trouble here. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to win these games quickly, and that's something that his deck really can't do, unless, you know, it involves like a double Boros Reckoner, give the beatdowns really quick draw. He does have an Aetherling to, you know, close games quickly, where a lot of the blue-white red decks don't. But I mean, that takes some time to get online. Yeah, it does. I, but if it comes down, it's, it's pretty much two turns. Yeah. You just make it, you know, an 8 1, <laughs> unblockable. You can't kill it. And do it again next turn. We've talked so much about it, and we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we haven't seen it. We don't know if any of these cards are good. Is Aetheling good? We don't know. No. Is Voice of Research is good? Probably we don't, not. Yeah, we don't, we don't think so. We don't think so. It's definitely a good sideboard card. Is Sire of Insanity good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a lock. That one is yeah. good. That one's definitely good. Uh, the, the clone mythic rare, the blue green clone. That yeah, protogenic mythic. mimic. The protogenic mimic, mimic, yeah. It's probably good. Yeah. I don't know what other cards. The turn Helix is good. I like the Helix. I like yeah. Turn and Burn a lot. Okay, you yeah. like Turn and Burn now? Yeah, I like yeah. it a lot. Okay. Because in the morning we were kind of like iffy about it. Yeah. I'm still kind of iffy about Turn and Burn. I mean, it's definitely good. It, it can't not be good just as like a two mana shock something. Yeah, I mean, it's all about versatility, right? Yeah. We have Thought Scout or Snapcaster Mage in your deck and stuff like that. You just want cards that are versatile. Yeah. You know, I don't know, again, if this if that's a card that should be a three or a four of, but, you know, something that's a clean answer to Boros Reckoner, clean answer to Thrag Tusk, Olivia all there. Uh, Olivia without counters, I guess, but, um, I mean, that's the kind of card you want in your deck. Yeah. Do you think Rouserek is good? We, we, we saw it play a couple of times. It didn't do too much. I haven't seen it enough. Yeah, I haven't. That one's like iffy too. So far, it didn't look that good, but I want it to be good, so I'm gonna say it's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah I kind of wanted to be. I really like when planeswalkers are good. Yeah. I, I love playing with planeswalkers. I feel Gideon is awesome, but nobody plays it. And there might not be a deck for it. It just seems good. Well, format the the for, new the, format again. Yeah, the format champion of justice. Yeah, I mean, it's such a unique and, and obscure card that it wouldn't surprise me if it's good. And it's also just like not surprising that someone hasn't had a home for it yet. It's so like strange and unique. Yeah, it's like it's plus one ability. It's just like weird, and like, are you supposed to build a deck around that plus one ability? I'm not really sure. Yeah, or is it just supposed to be like a value guy? 
maybe it's a cyborg card, like kind of how voice researchers might just be a cyborg card too. That's like your deck. Your, your deck is just whatever, and your cyborg is like two Gideons, four voice researchers. Well, like, what are you cyborging that Gideon in against? I don't know, like control decks that don't play Azorius Charms or something. Yeah, like control decks that like, don't have Detention Sphere or something like that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. We do see both players. Looks like at least we, we've resolved our mulligans here. We're going to start off with a Thought, Thought Scour here. Maybe he's digging for Lance. Hollow Fountain Azorius Charm over. Steam Fence was the draw, so that's going to come into play. Rally is going to pass the turn back. Chris going to draw his card. He draws and locks it on the Smiter. Yeah, probably a Farsi. Yes, yeah. sir. So, so blue mana breeding on Breeding pool? Mine. Yeah. Yeah, probably breeding pool. So we see Ellie is on five cards now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. You know, when, when you go down to five, you're definitely going to keep the one land, Thought Scour head. Yeah. You can't not keep it. All right, so there's a breeding pool from, uh, from Chris off of his Farsi. Wow, next round is round eight. We don't play around here. Man. Yeah, this, this, yeah, this is. We get stuff done. We do. We start some games open series. Yeah. All right, so there's a draw from Alien. He's gonna yeah, pass, pass the turn back. Yeah, and this isn't this isn't too surprising, right? I'm only gonna five. We saw Thought Scour main phase. You know, just reeks of someone who's looking for a land drop. As you see, Chris is gonna play Gavney Township here. Is he going to play Advent of the Worm? I mean, he has access to Advent of the Worm, and he has Locks on Spider. Yeah, and Restoration Angel, and, and he has a Negate. I mean, if I was Chris, I'd probably just pass the turn and fine with that here. Yeah. And I'll just see what happens. Playing Smiter, I don't hate either. Yeah, I mean, I just want to get to myself ha to the opportunity. Having your battle like that, I'm not the biggest fan of. Yeah. I mean, you know, leaving Township open doesn't represent anything. Yeah. Leaving Breeding Pool open actually represents something. Sure, yeah. See a Thought Scour here from Ellie. Represents like a dispel or something. Yeah, Sulphur Falls in the Sphinx's Revelation. Draws a card. Can't tell it was not a land. But, you know, going back to the Smiter play, I would much rather, you know, go Advent of the Worm. It, maybe it gets countered, maybe it doesn't. If I draw my fifth land, I can go Smiter plus represent the gate yeah. all in the same turn, so I can actually represent two spells in one turn. Yeah, now, so, yeah, now so Chris about. can't do that. It's all about you know maximizing your mana each turn, and it's not going to matter too much because Eli is stuck on two lands, mulligan the five. Yeah, but it, I definitely do agree with you there. So Advent of the Worm is going to resolve. Here's a five-five. We're going to see Harvest, Harvest Pyre. Pyre. Okay, that's going to be for five to take care of that Harvest, take care of that Advent of the Worm. Okay. Chris will untap. Chris draw another lock on Spider. Yeah. Yeah, so, so probably see him cast that this turn. Yeah, I, I would agree here. Just just get another second smiter. I, mean, I want I want to just I just want to main phase an advent of the worm here. Yeah, I, he does have advent of the worm, so either way, it's not going to matter that much. Sure. So there's right. advent of the worm again. I, you know, I just want to cast advent of the worm when the shields are down. Yeah, like he was tapped fair. out. So like I don't why, why open myself up to like get him randomly dispelled or something, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But here comes an attack for eight. Got to put Ellie down to four. And, you know, at this point, he can play that other Smiter if he wants to. You're going to see Breeding Pool coming to play on tap. He can play, like, a Thraxus or something. Just make sure that whatever spell you do play, I mean, he can't be Wrath anyway because it takes double white. Yeah. And Ellie's going to draw his card and concede the game. So Chris Terrawiggler is going to win this game. And this match, 2-0. to zero. Prime Speaker Bant moving on to 6-1. 6-1. Six and one. Six and one. Ellie, unfortunate draws, a couple of mistakes in game one, but a win's a win's a win. Yeah. So Chris so, moving on to six and one. Yeah, so it looks like Chris will probably have to win the next two two rounds and hopefully be able to draw him. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is really tough. With with 449 players at a 10-round tournament, you never really know what's going to happen. Yeah. I believe not too long ago we had an 11-round SGG open. Is that yeah, correct? Columbus.